I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And thanks so much for all the new subscribers coming on board. We have some interesting names here. One goes by the moniker of Mashed Potatoes. We have a Fig Newton. I love it. And thank you very much for all the Patreons that I have. And a special shout out to a new Patreon that just came on board, uh, Too Slow. Okay, thank you very much, Too Slow. A man of few words, but his support is much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, today, oh yeah, I remember folks, it's just whiskey. <laughs> <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about and reviewing the brand new Compass Box release of the 7th edition of the Flaming Heart 2022. Okay, um, one of the coolest labels that they've done, um, I mean they do a lot of cool labels, but if you're into rock music like I am, this really, it resonates. But at the end of the day, it's just window dressing, you know, uh, it's what's in the bottle that's going to really matter. And we're going to see, uh, in my opinion, if I feel it's worth the price that they're charging these days. Okay, um, it comes in at 48.9% ABV, non-chill filtered, no coloring added. It is a blend of single malts and... It retails for about $150. Now, the makeup of this is Lafroig 20%, Talisca 7.7%, Kalila 8.1%. Their, uh, I believe it's the Compass Box own uh, Highland Malt Blend 23%, okay, which is my understanding a minimum aged five years in their custom. French oak casks. So that Highland malt blend actually makes up the majority. Okay, then there's more. Then there's also uh, Glen Elgin. Okay, 17% of Glen Elgin, which I do like Glen Elgin. And then um, Balmenic, Balmenic, 12.8%. And that's in first fill bourbon, which you can pick up some first fill bourbon uh, notes in this. Then they kind of like teaspoon and throw in a little bit of the, the nectar from their 15th anniversary compass box. Rem, they call it remnants, 3%. They throw in uh, the Peat Monster, Peat Monster Special Edition, the Arcana remnant, 2%. And then uh, the Flaming Heart from 2018 remnant, 1%. So there's an awful lot that's thrown in there. I mean, it seems like it's everything in the kitchen sink and it's like okay what else do we need to get rid of and let's just dump it in here that's kind of how i'm getting from from this i think it's uh, we're going to get into the review obviously but generally speaking i do not think this represents the sum of its parts okay i think there's a little too much going in there and i think the price they charge it is I don't. I didn't email them to find out these age statements, but I'm a guessing. I'm going to take a guess that probably there's some that Lafroig is probably an older Lafroig in there, and the same maybe with the Talisker and the Kalila. There could be some older. Uh, so maybe that's why they're they're charging. But I think they kind of put a little bit too much into this. And uh, anyway, um, I highly recommend letting this open up. It really benefits from time in the glass. And it swims fairly well if you want to play around with water, which I, I've done. Um, it, you, it, it, it swims well, okay? So um, here we go. On the nose. The nose is a bit subdued, okay? You get a, a whiff of smoke, a hint of peat, okay? With, with that Lafroig and Talisker and Kalila in there, I really thought this was going to be much more smoky and, and peaty, but it's it's not. So there's a whiff of smoke, hint of peat. The main notes are candle wax, like uh, fruity candle wax with vanilla cream. 
when I first opened this up, this bottle, there was a, a slight hint of acetone, which leads me to the, uh, back to the, the first filled bourbon that they might have used in there, but that dis that dissipates and becomes almost negligible. <clears throat> a hint of flint, okay? And if you dig really deep, and you have to really dig deep with this, okay? There, there are some fruits in there, and they do describe this as one of their more fruitier uh, Flaming Heart additions in, in many years, okay? So there is, that, I think that Glen Elgin was bringing some of that, that fruit and certainly the Highland malt blend. But there is a little bit of pineapple and peach, but you really have to, you really have to dig, okay, on the palate. It does have a nice mouthfeel, a bit puckering, a slight sweetness. I'm picking up some cola notes, maybe even a little bit of root beer notes, but definitely some cola, cola root beer. I'm not really picking up the peat, although there's probably a little bit in there. Um, you, the, the texture is that waxy chalkiness, okay? They're definitely, you get, you're definitely getting that, whether it's from Talisker or not, you're getting that Talisker pepperiness, that oak spice peppery bite is definitely there. And I also get a sensation like, I've never chewed on raw barley, okay? But there's like that, almost like that, I don't want to say rye because it's not, there's no dill note in there whatsoever, but in my imagination, if I chewed on a raw piece of uh, barley, uh, right, you know, pick right off the stalk, um, there's a, there's, so there's that with a, a slight, very slight mintiness in there, very slight. The finish is medium, but I'll, I'll give a caveat in that it, it does lead into some, uh, a length because it, that, that oak spice, that pepperiness definitely lingers. Um, a, a little bit of ash in there, which is probably from the, the Kalila. And also, too, there's a, a little bit of that farmyard hay note in there, just a little bit. So it's going to, at the end, when you smell the glass, you'll pick up that barnyard, that farmyard funky hay kind of a thing going on. Just a little bit, but it's it's there. When I first opened this bottle, I, I had great expectations for this. Um, and when I, you know, first noticed it, and, and even now, it it reminds me of like when you were a kid and you smelt whiskey. This smells and tastes like whiskey, with a little bit more fruit in it. Okay, that's kind of my overall thing there. But definitely that candle waxiness, chalkiness, oak spice peppery with some uh, slight sweetness and a little bit of fruits. That's how I overall describe this experience. But again, I don't think it's uh, greater than the sum of its parts. Um, I think they've kind of probably put a little too much into this, but, um, and, and, you know, some might enjoy it more than, than I am. Um, but for 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 my enjoyment factor, this is way overpriced. I th again, I think they, the price, I think they put it in there as, as high as it is because they can to pay for the artwork and packaging. But there probably is some older juice in there, but it doesn't benefit from that. So in that respect, if I had paid $75, I would have been much more much less disappointed, <laughs> I guess is a better way to put it. Um, I think the value on this is probably half of what they're charging for, in my opinion, for my enjoyment. Okay. So what am I going to give it a score? It, it, which, uh, in, you know, incorporating the whole price thing or whatever, for my enjoyment, 
this is not something I'm going to be reaching for. I'm going to put it away and, and maybe in time it's going to open up a little bit. But right now, uh, my score is going to be more like an 85, 86. I'll be, I'll be generous and give it an 86. Um, it's not a bad whiskey at all. There's no, uh, you know, you're not picking up any off youth notes in there. Um, uh, I just think it's a bit of a, a Frankenstein. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll end it up with a, we'll give it a, an 86, which I think is a respectable score. Um, but I can't go much more than that. I, and you know, from, from what I'm doing here. So again, if you like today's show, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon with the link in the description below. And thanks so much for the Patreon support that I do have. And remember folks, it's just whiskey. So hats off to you all and take care folks.